All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we'll discuss the precise definition of a limit. And basically, in my early videos, I did uh, a lot of videos on limits, limit laws, and, and examples on them. But I use an intuitive definition approach. And I'll just recap what I mean by that. It's just uh, this one here. If you have limit as x approaches a, if f of x equals to l, and this is just, you could just say it as, as x is close to a, basically f, f of x is approaching l. And you can see this visually if you just have a random function like this here, and at, let's say at this point, this is going down here. If this is a, and then as you're approaching a, because this is the x-axis as you're approaching it, and basically the limit is just approaching this value right here. So this is the limit right here, so l. So that's the, the intuitive one, it's just basically subjective, it's getting closer, etc. But uh, if you're getting closer to a, then you're getting closer to l on the fx axis here, or the y-axis, and, and this is just subjective because you're using words like close to uh, and approaches, etc. So we need a, a more precise definition or a precise definition to prove conclusively uh, limits such as this one here, limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x. This one we can't plug in 0, so we can't really find that limit. You would just have to plug in numbers that are getting closer and closer to 0, but again, that's still subjective, and we need a more like a conclusive, a precise definition. So now this is the definition, this is a bit uh, complex, but I'll go over what it means uh, shortly. But basically, precise definition states, let f be a function defined on some open interval, meaning it doesn't have to equal on the ends, just an inside uh, it should be equal somewhere, uh, that, that contains the number a, except possibly at a itself here. So it doesn't have to be defined at a. Then we can say that the limit of fx as x approaches a is l, and we can write it as this limit of x equals l x uh, approaches a, the same as above intuitive definition. But we have this case right here. If for every number this is uh, epsilon, this is a Greek letter epsilon, just used traditionally, and also uh, then there is a number delta. This is also Greek. This is uh, delta uh, greater than zero. So these are just any random number that's greater than zero. So any positive number, both of these, such that then you have this difference, f of x minus l is less than this number whenever x minus a is less than this random number here. Yeah, now in explaining what uh, this definition is, well, we just to illustrate what epsilon and delta are a bit more, I'll, I'll just say that they're, let's just say they're really, really small. Yeah, so there's small numbers here, and, and in fact, this, this fx minus l and this x minus a, these are just distances or, or in terms of absolute value. So what we mean by that, if you have a random function like this right here, and let's say at, we're trying to find the limit at this value right here, which is a. Yeah, so for this function here, this limit is l here, so at this a right here. So we when we have something like this here, so if we have fx minus l, then what we're saying is going to be less than epsilon, so that the maximum, if we just draw a, let's just say a small epsilon right here, up here, and then also right here, epsilon. And similarly, we, do, we draw the delta here and here. I have it small here just because when you have it really small, this is pretty much linear. So I'll just, just zoom in here. So yeah, if we zoom in from this one here, we basically have a pretty much linear uh, uh, graph like this one right here. So at this value A, so this is at this one is right here, a, and then over here we have, yeah, we have l, the limit here. So now we have these really small numbers, the epsilon now, we'll just, just so we can draw it a bit bigger. Yeah, so now this is the epsilon right here. So all it is a distance away from the limit here. So that's the maximum one here. And our f of x, what we're saying is that the fx minus l, or the distance to l, is going to be less than epsilon. So then fx has to be somewhere in between this outer limit, so it's somewhere in between right here or here, right here. And at this point right here, this is just L plus epsilon, and right here is L minus epsilon, this outer limit. So now all that the precise definition is saying is that if we have this epsilon here and f of x is somewhere, let's just say that over here, I guess, so f of x has to be in between these right here. And uh, all it's saying that if, if it's f of x minus L has to be less than epsilon, it's, it's, it's true for every, well, if you just draw a horizontal line down here and a vertical line down from here to the bottom. Yes, yeah, so if we draw this line down here, so now we have this is the delta right here. So that's all the precise definition is saying. Uh, it, it's pretty uh, straightforward once you get this idea in here. So now at, at this point right here, this is going to be, well, 
a minus delta and this one right here is a plus delta right here and the and this absolute value right here we're all we're saying is that now we have an x value it's going to be anywhere in between these here so we'll say x is there and we know that this this absolute value right here is just or actually uh, at this point I'm not yeah, so this absolute value is actually from here to here so this one right here is saying x minus a this absolute value has to be less than delta and this delta is the farthest one here so that all we're saying is and so all we're saying is that if this is fx here's the random point in inside this little uh, boundaries here with epsilon then this is an absolute value fx minus l all we're saying it's less than epsilon for whenever this is true so whenever x is less than x minus a the absolute value is less than this delta here so this is kind of a way of seeing the absolute value and I'll illustrate it through an example just to uh, basically get this to uh, uh, just show you what I mean it's pretty straightforward just it's hard to get around your head yeah, so basically to illustrate the precise definition we'll go over this example so it's uh, f if you have fx equals to well 2x minus 1 if x is not equal to 3 and it's equal to well 6 if x equals to 3 the question here is how close to 3 does x have to be if x differs or f of x differs from 5 by less than 0.1 yeah, so if we just dr uh, graph out this function, this, it was going to look something like this is fx here, and then we have a circle right here at 3. Because uh, if we plug in 3 right here, we're going to get, well, because we know the limit is approaching 5, so th 2 times 3 minus 1, this is just going to be 6 minus 1 is 5. So the, the limit is actually approaching, we know that it's approaching this 5 number here, but at 3, we know that if you just, uh, through the, uh, the function, it's going to be equal to 6, so it's going to be something like it here. So this is the actual number, so 6. But the question is, how close to 5, yeah, yeah, so how close to th how close to this 3 does x have to be? So let's say x is somewhere in between here. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's somewhere in between whatever the number we're trying to find here. So it have to be if fx differs from 5 by less than 0.1. So, so it's again, it's exactly like the precise definition. If we draw this as, let's say, right here is 5.01, and this difference right here is... 0.1 and also we have a, a negative difference as well this is going to be 0.1 right here and this is going to be well 4.99 so now we're saying if x is differs less than this yeah so how close to 3 does have to be so we know that fx can be somewhere in between right, like this one here and we know so this we'll just say fx so then it's exactly like our precise definition we'll go fx minus 5 is going to be a little less than the maximum it can be is 0.1 and then if we just draw the outer boundaries again exactly like the precise definition when I was illustrating now, now all we're doing is actually well this is just this is just uh, epsilon so now what all we're doing is finding this this delta now so if we just draw this down here so now we gotta find out what this delta is and then we'll see how close 2, 3 does it have to be, and it's going to have to be less than this delta. So this is the max. So we just draw this and go down. This is the max that it can be close to. So then we got to find out right here if this is x. But then if we find the difference from x to 3, x minus 3 is going to be less than, well, this delta. So we got to find the delta. That's uh, pretty straightforward. Well, we, we could just plug this f of x inside. So we know f of x minus 5 is less than 0.1. And if we plug in the f of x, we get, we know that this is 2x minus 1, then it's going to be minus, uh, minus 5, not 6. Uh, anyway, so then, then this is going to be equal to now, if we just simplify this, 2x minus 6. And now this is equal to, we could actually take the 2 out. So we take the 2 out, it's just going to have x minus 3, and this is less than 0.1. And remember, this this is the x minus 3. We've got to find this delta. So we have this one. If we rearrange this one, or divide by 2 on both sides, we get x minus 3 is less than 0.1 divided by 2 equals to 0.05, and this is our delta. So there, this is exactly what we're trying to get through with the precise definition. So what this is saying, yeah, it's what we're saying now is, is fx is less than 5, uh, yeah, yeah, minus 5 is less than 0.1 if the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 0.05 here. This is epsilon now. This is delta. So now, now the idea is if we just made this even lower. Yeah. So now the idea of this precise limit is that we let's just make this even lower here. We we don't need to be uh, like to 
the pre precisely the limit, this has to be infinitely small. So let's just make it, uh, let's just go to instead of 0.1, fx minus 5 is less than, let's say, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and another one here. And now, then, then this one, all, all it's doing is because we know that it's going to be divided by two right here. Is this one from this, uh, from this example? All we're do, doing is dividing by this two, so we get epsilon divided by two. And now this is number. This is going to be our new epsilon. So, and then this is just going to be now x minus three uh, is less than point zero 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 one two three four, f and then a five here, and this is equal to delta. And so the idea now, this is, yeah, so we can get any number here. So epsilon can be any number. Yeah, so it could be any small number or any number, but number is, it's always greater than zero. That's by the definition. And we're still going to get an epsilon that is, uh, yeah, so we're still going to get an epsilon. It's also going to be really small such that the distance from the the three or the a or whatever the limit you're trying to find is going to be less than this epsilon. So this is all that the precise definition is saying. Yeah. So now if we state in words what the precise precise definition is saying now, basically it states that the distance between f x and l can be made arbitrarily small. So we can make it as small. This is a small, not a. I just uh, corrected this one right here. So basically, it, it can be arbitrarily small. So we can make it as small as we want just by taking distance from x to a sufficiently small here. And, and all we're doing basically is, is using this epsilon, you know, this delta and epsilon. So we're basically taking out the subjective terms as close to. But, but the intuitive idea still, uh, still holds true. But now we have just a concrete way of saying that we have a limit. Basically, so we can make this any, like this example, we can just make this really, really small. And this also becomes really, really small. So we'll, all we're doing is is getting really, really close to uh, the limit, or five in this case here. Uh, and we can basically say now we can make it as small as we want, and we're still going to get, uh, yeah, so we're still going to get closer and closer to the five or the limit. Well, anyways, that's all for today. It's uh, just a bit uh, abstract and uh, just a bit complex uh, thing to under understand. But the uh, intuitive idea is pretty straightforward. But to be precise, we needed to add these epsilon and delta just so we can have a way of saying they're actually getting smaller, arbitrarily small, so that we have a limit. Well, that's all for today. Remember, you can download these notes in the Dropbox link below. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math. E